Hello survivors, hi family and friends. This is Roy from Boosie Sweetheart's Guide to Life and other disappointing experiences with a travel video that includes keeping how to keep our memories in our own handmade journal. Well, hello, finally uh, got this video going. It has uh, three purposes. One is to share with you a little bit about a trip we took uh, years ago on the uh, Queen Mary II from New York, well, Brooklyn, to um, London, well, Southampton, and then uh, a plane ride to Paris. Uh, the second is to um, try out a new um, camera called Manicam software. I've been having some issues with that. And lastly is, to, and more importantly, most importantly, is to share with you my husband, the Crafty Curmudgeon's first journal, uh, at least one of the first journal, which is a travel log uh, of this wonderful vacation. You know, when, uh, when I was little, you uh, didn't take a plane to Europe. It was just too expensive. Uh, so everyone took a boat, uh, a ship, Oceans, ocean liners were all over New York, uh, leaving from Brooklyn and leaving from Manhattan. It was wonderful and so romantic. I got so hooked on it, I made models and uh, followed it in the newspaper when ships were coming in and ships were leaving. Uh, so when we had the opportunity to take a transatlantic boat ride ship, uh, on the Queen Mary too, we jumped at it. It was a five-day journey. We um, lost an hour as we went each day. So when we got to uh, England, we our biological clocks were uh, already set and adjusted. So if anybody has ever flown overseas, you know that first day going back is getting there is. Uh, very hard, very difficult adjustment. Uh, so anyway, here's our uh, little travelogue and journal making experience, which I call a journal, a journey and a journal, Queen Mary II and Paris. Uh, thank you for viewing and I hope you enjoy. There's something really special about leaving on a ship from New York. Uh, we drove to the port uh, to see the Queen Mary docked in Brooklyn um, not up by the regular piers, but way down by the Verrazano Bridge. She's a beautiful ship, uh, a real ocean liner. Uh, one of the thrills, of course, is leaving New York Harbor with the Statue of Liberty behind us uh, and headed out towards New York Harbor and the Lower Bay. And there's the Verrazano Bridge. There is a six-foot clearance <laughs> uh, between the top of the uh, ship and the bottom of the bridge, the roadway. And here we go, headed out for our five-day cross-transatlantic sailing. Um, the ship is beautiful. Once we got to Southampton, we took a cab to the airport and off to Paris uh, to see the wonderful City of Lights. Luckily, uh, for the third or fourth time, I've seen Notre Dame de Paris. And this was completely, that whole wooden roof is completely destroyed. Uh, thank goodness the uh, ramparts and all of the um, flying buttresses were saved. This is, of course, the Louvre, a uh, beautiful museum. Uh, you could spend days there, uh, certainly as someone who loves art. And the city has just its wonderful Parisian vibe, very different than uh, some of the big cities I'm used to, uh, certainly very busy, very different from New York. Au revoir, Paris. We'll be back. How do we remember and memorialize this wonderful vacation? Well, of course, we make a travel journal. And this is uh, the Crafty Camargin's tribute to our vacation. Well, this is a fun video for a couple of reasons. Number one, it helps me relive a vacation that we took, I think, in 2007. And number two, it gives me a chance to show you what my husband has made uh, one of his first, if not the first, journal. And there are so many people 
responsible for motivating us and teaching us and giving us advice and befriending us. Um, I, I can't even begin to name them. Um, but you all know who you are because we are constantly uh, visiting you and commenting on your videos. This uh, is um, a travel journal uh, in a sense, without photos, one of the things that I think is lacking in uh, some of our scrapbooks, that a video especially, is we don't have any of the uh, ephemera, any of the little things that made the vacation very, very special. And that's what's in this journal. Um, it's all the little tidbits and things that after you see a photo or see a video, you're holding something that you may have held uh, when you were away. Now this is hand-dyed uh, paper. This was a first for him. And um, you can see the signatures are held in with uh, two uh, rows of um, cording. Um, such a pretty design. Inside covers are matching. The inside covers are matching. I'm so proud of them. Um, and now we start our little revisit of our um, vacation. Um, the Queen Mary, we were on deck 11. I can't remember the cabin, but here's one of the luggage tags. And the others were on our luggage. So that's very special, I think. Um, here it says, uh, left, it was May 29th, 2007, we left for Brook from the Brooklyn Terminal, and uh, we sailed under the Verrazano Bridge. Here is our cruise card, and for any of you who cruise know that you get, well, it's changing, sometimes now you get a bracelet, uh, but this is the cruise card for the Queen Mary, and this, of course, you show whenever you want a beverage, or uh, try to get in your room. This is your room key, your charge card, no money exchanges hands uh, unless you want a tip. And here's some little uh, ephemera from a French line. I don't know. I don't remember. You know, when I was a kid, I was born in 1947, so there was only the ships to get you to Europe. Um, in our stateroom, we found this pocket map to guide us around the QM2. We would spend a few hours in the UK and several days in Paris. Pounds and francs were also needed. So we got this map, and it'll show us where all the important things are, what deck, how to get there. And uh, we managed to get uh, francs and Pounds. She doesn't look like that anymore. <laughs> I don't understand any of this. When I first went to France in uh, 1971, the money, the francs, were different sizes. So you could have a bill that was this big. Not quite, as, almost as big as, almost this big, not quite. And you had to fold it up to get it into your pocket. Um, so I was afraid I was going to get robbed, you know, I'm a New Yorker, you think about these things. And um, I folded my money, someone said, fold your money, and I put it in my shoe. Mm, not a good idea. I did so much walking that I wore <laughs> a hole in some of the French money. Oh my goodness. And here's another pocket. And... Beautiful picture, see what he, what he was able to do. This is all techniques that he learned online from the same people who were watching this um, video. It's all nautical terms. I don't have the focus, uh, autofocus, so can't see it. But great ephemera for that. Um, the old fashioned uh, um, bell, bell hops. Um, I don't know who this is. Oops. I can't tell who that is. Hmm. 
It might be John's grandfather, but I don't think so. John's grandfather was a merchant marine and would sail between Europe and uh, America and Europe and the Caribbean. I think he brought bananas and things like that on the ship. He was a purser. Uh, he couldn't swim. <laughs> and his last ship, one of his last ships, was the Morrow Castle, which burned off the coast of New Jersey. And we have a photo of somewhere of him hanging on the anchor line for dear life because he couldn't swim. Imagine serving on a ship, not being able to swim, and no life jacket. Um, here's a beautiful little passage from a book uh, from London, from England, talking about Piccadilly Circus. Um, here is a our dining room card. Um, the Queen, the Queen Mary, Cunard still has class um, sailings, so you can be in, they don't call it first, second, third class anymore, but there's at least two cl classes, and uh, they really segregate the passengers. I wasn't too thrilled with that, but uh, that's what it was. Here's the original Queen Mary. Um, my uncle my mother's brother was uh, a naval uh, career man. He served on the um, SS Shangri-La, an aircraft carrier. And when I was a kid, it was docked in Manhattan. And next to, we were allowed to go in on visitor's day, on family day, and spend time, have lunch on the uh, aircraft carrier. God, for a little kid, five-year-old, seven-year-old, it must have been seven or eight. Uh, boy, that was something else I have to tell you and next to us was the original Queen Mary she was docked uh, loading passengers and unloading and whatever they do um, here's a map of uh, um, the dock at Southampton and a little bit about uh, what a, brig a brigade is um, oh here we are dining in one of the dining rooms um, it was a um, formal night, we had to pack so much luggage for parties. We actually shipped some back after we uh, got to Southampton, so we didn't have to lug around two other suitcases. So we shipped them back with DLL, D, DHL, DHL. And finally we crossed onward to Paris. We took a plane to, uh, from, I think it was Heathrow, to Charles de Gaulle on Air France. Shh, I will never fly Air France again. <laughs> oh, first of all, each bag had to be weighed and uh, they all had to be under a certain amount. Well, we had one bag that was a little less and one bag that was a little over. So at the ticket, at the check in counter, we we're actually opening the suitcases and shifting stuff around. <laughs> so that the suitcases would be um, the same weight. Um, and um, they're very business-like. They're not the warmest customer service people in the industry. Um, Cunard White Star Line um, had so many ships in the 1930s and 40s and 50s. Uh, now they're down to the Queens, as they say. I don't think there's anything else. And there's all these spaces. Now we can fill these with some of the photos that we cherish. But um, so far the journal, this is one signature as you can see, what he did here. One, um, we can fill this with pictures now that we have the whole journal f filled. We love Paris. I've been there several times. Not, I'm not uh, an international jet setter. But uh, when I can get there, I love it. It is a very special place. Uh, so if you've never been to Paris, put that on your wish list. Here's some more ephemera. Um, not sure it says Paris. Now see here, we, we were learning. Some things got stuck. Um, the glue came off. Um, we didn't go to uh, any clubs. There's some fun clubs in um, Paris um, where you can hear things in English. You know, uh, 
One of the things we love to do if we are able to go to Spain is uh, real traditional flamenco dancing. And you can go to local tapas bars and they'll have um, um, flamenco dancing. It's absolutely beautiful. There's a company that comes to Manhattan once in a while and I think we have tickets for this season there. This is a remarkable building. Um, Sacre Coeur um, Cathedral. It's, it's, no pictures will do it justice. It's one of my favorite places in the world to go see. I've never been to something like the Taj Mahal, um, but I've been to the Vatican and, and, and um, uh, Westminster, Westminster Cathedral. Uh, this tops them both. Le um, Jardin de Montmartre, Pierre Auguste Renoir. Oh, this is a. We were in this garden that Renoir painted. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, Cinema de Pantheon. We um, took the train everywhere. The, the subway, the transportation, mass transit in Europe is uh, beyond beautiful. Um, we, and this is my opinion, we in America sold ourselves to the devil when we sold off all of our railroad line uh, right-of-ways. We should have uh, a state-of-the-art modern rail system instead of what we have. Uh, it's very sad when you go um, to Europe and you see the kind of transportation, the elegant transportation, fast, convenient, on-time, efficient, and inexpensive uh, transportation between cities, uh, between countries, because Europe is much smaller in total uh, ground cover than the United States, so you can go to two countries, three countries in a day, easily. Um, well, this is... Um, a little restaurant we went to. I think I showed you. Yes, I did. There's a. There should be a picture at the beginning of, of this restaurant. Just delightful. You can't um, recreate that because of being in Paris. You can find a restaurant like that at anywhere, probably in the big cities of the United States. But just the whole atmosphere of everybody um, speaking French and English and all the languages. Um, and again, I've been to Notre Dame. I actually climbed up here in 1971 and somewhere tucked away somewhere in a closet where all those boxes and boxes and boxes of photos are or is a picture of me with a gargoyle up there. Uh, they saved the rose window in the fire. Um, but what you can't see, and I've only seen on television, is the whole back uh, wooden structure is gone. Um, there's a picture at the beginning of this video of the gar of the um, um, flying buttresses. Um, at for some p p short time, I was an architect major, and these just um, in college I was, and these just hypnotized me. Uh, absolutely beautiful, beautiful architecture. Um, <laughs> once you get to Paris, <laughs> you know, the River Seine runs through the Paris, uh, the city of Paris, and Ile de la Cité is, Ile de la Cité is where, um, it splits, and Notre Dame is in the middle, but anyway, you get around, if you want to be by the, uh, river, um, well, by bateau bus, bateau bus which really is the boat bus. Inexpensive. It's like a hop on, hop off. Um, I think we paid one fee and we had the day of it, so many hours of it. And it's so much fun because you just go down to the wharf and jump on the boat when it's there. Um, and you get to see some of the best views of the city. Um, and here's some more information about the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower, the first time I saw it, I couldn't believe how huge it was. I, I don't know what I was expecting. It is a big, big structure. Um, 
and it lights up at night now. They have all kinds of sparkly lights. It's beautiful. There was a law, I think, or a regulation, that no building in Paris could be taller than the Eiffel Tower. I think they've changed that. Uh, I'm not sure. We took a day trip out to the Le Palais de Versailles uh, in the countryside. I came back completely re-understanding the French Revolution. The opulence of this place, the gold, the diamonds, the jewelry, the paintings, the space, the enormity of it all, um, was insulting to my sensitivity when I knew that people were dying of hunger. Does this sound familiar at all? A little current? While billionaires in the French nobility um, were living like this. Uh, to go through the Palace of Versailles is a lesson in history. Um, you know, they say, off with her head for uh, Marie Antoinette. Um, I can very well see why people were so upset. And this was basically where the, uh, the kings of France lived. Queen, the queens, um, Marie Antoinette had a whole nother estate not quite as large, but she was over here with just as much opulence, just as much gold, just as many servants. I cannot even imagine. It's gorgeous. I mean, I'll grant it, it is beautiful, but it is um, an insult to people who are working 40, 50, 60 hours a week for minimum wage and a little over. And then, of course, you must go to the Louvre, and we did. We went to so many places. Uh, the Louvre is a wonderful place, very crowded. Uh, I would not go in the summer uh, anymore. It's uh, very, very crowded. The lines along a beautiful museum. Um, you cannot go to Paris without going to the Louvre. And uh, this is the end of the journal. Now, I completely ignored <laughs> the structure of the journal. And that was the point of this. Uh, but you can see what John did with all of the things that he learned um, from you wonderful, wonderful craftspeople who make journals. It's holding up really well. It brings back so many memories. Look at the, it's got stamps. He was doing stamping uh, a while back before he, uh, the business, his business, the his work got very busy. Now that he's retired, it's easier for him um, to dig out all these things. Between his crafting and my crafting, we could probably use um, uh, a store the size of uh, Costco. <laughs> but you know what that's like. Um, and yeah, I love the way everything is displayed. And you can see, I hope, with my enthusiasm, now this cruise, this trip was uh, years ago, what, I don't know, I can't do the math, but 2007, so it's 13 years ago, and this just brought everything back, everything came back uh, to me like it was yesterday, because I have the things that we touched, um, it, it's just amazing, um, so this is the... Uh, Crafty Curmudgeon's first attempt at a journal, he's gotten so good. I was going to bring over some more, but I knew this video was going to go long. Uh, I'm also trying out this Manicam. I'm having some audio difficulties, but I'm loving the, uh, the videography of it. I've just got to figure out how to work the uh, audio and synchronize it, because when I first did some testing, the voice and uh, the video were not lined up. Uh, and some of you may have seen my video on the uh, snippets, snippet strips. I'll put a link in the uh, description below. And um, oof, what I wanted to show you is one of the things these are good for. Now, that certainly in this color, because the cover is not decorated yet. Something just happened. Okay. Um, my screen went blank for a minute, but it came back. 
uh, the cover is not decorated as yet, but uh, you can see how something like this would decorate the cover. But I was actually thinking, uh, if this were just a tiny bit bigger and a little more flexible, this would make a great binding uh, spine cover. Look at how pretty that would be if you fold it over. I wouldn't use such heavy um, interfacing underneath. I would keep that kind of thin. Uh, and in the right colors, this would be a wonderful... i got to try this. I'll, I'll try one and see how that works. And I'll show you how that works. But anyway, this is uh, two a two-purpose video. It's checking out Manicam and showing you this uh, great first project. Um, I think for a first journal, this is outrageously good. But I'm kind of uh, partial. So thank you very much for viewing. I don't know how long this went on. Um, I got talking a bit. Thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, spending time with me and thinking that this is important and interesting. And uh, I'll see you in some live streams. Uh, thanking you all for uh, uh, making our life richer with things like this to do. Uh, so again, in the words of uh, a mentor on television, PBS, Nancy Zeman, uh, who's been going a while now, Bye for now. Thank you.